everyone, welcome back to Mob Vlog. Today is May 12th, 2021, and we're going to change it up today. I figured we'd do something a little different today, but kind of along the lines of uh, Chicago uh, mob uh, crime. So this uh, today, we're going to talk about James Caan and a movie that he was in called The Thief. So everyone, uh, it's Redness Day, and welcome back to Mob Vlog. Hey, how's it going today, Red? Pretty good. We don't have anybody in here. <laughs> They're coming in. There's about 30 people. Welcome, everybody. If you're just coming in, hit the like button. Today is going to be a really cool day because we're talking about uh, the movie The Thief. Now, I know a lot of you have seen the movie The Thief. A lot of you maybe even went to the movie theater to see the movie The Thief. I, however, never seen the movie The Thief until last night, of course. Last night I sat and watched it, and I was talking to Red about it, and I said, Red, what do you want to talk about uh, this week? There's maybe be, be a topic or something. And somehow we went down some rabbit hole, and, 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 and this movie came up, and I started talking, because Frank a lot had talked about this uh, in the past, and yeah, we thought it would be kind of interesting. So just in the uh, comments, if you've seen... If you've seen the movie, uh, let us uh, let us know in the comments, uh, yes, that you've seen it. And I just want to say hi to a few people as we get this going. Ovidia, Ov Ovida Sinclair, David Grimm, Tim Halverson, Sean Pender, Mickey Griggs, Philip Wright. Do you know these names, Red? Do they all sound familiar I'm, yet? I'm, excuse me, yeah. They're regular Kate, people. They're Kate, people. <laughs> yeah, Kate Guerrero. Rock News. Scott H. DPN. Yeah. Um, just hey, me. How you doing, Pam? <laughs> hey, Pam, Andre, uh, Pelgrini, Mike Alexander, Mike Mataja, man, all of you guys, Outfit Boss, All Twos Customs, Chain Weaver, Leanne rolling along. What's going on, everybody? Happy Redness Day. It is the 12th of May. Hit that like button if you're just getting in. We're going to be talking about the movie... Uh, the Thief with James Caan and uh, Jim Belushi was in it as well. Uh, who else, Red? I for, um, Willie Nelson. Oh. Willie Nelson. Willie Nelson, Tuesday Well. Uh huh. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and looks well, like. Cast. I mean, it was pretty good. Gary Mushinsky saw it. This was, well, this was Michael Mann's big uh, uh, debut. Uh, you know, he had done some type of French film or documentary before this. But uh, anyhow, Mickey Griggs, uh, hey, hey, hey guys, Christopher Mims, Ryan Brown. Uh, I, um, Ryan, I am really, really sorry to hear about your mother. And I'm very sorry she passed away this morning. Oh, I, uh, I'm sorry. I'm, man, I'm really sorry, Ryan, to hear that. That's not, a, that's not an easy, easy moment. And um, hey, man. My thoughts are with you, and I'm sure everybody else who's watching today also has Ryan Brown and his family and their thoughts. Uh, really sorry to hear about that, pal. Thoughts are uh, great. Yeah, Carl Foster. Mike, I, I've seen, I love his his black 79 Eldorado, yes. Um, so, so let's get into, uh, let's get into this. Uh, the movie came out, it was based on a book, and the book was written by a, they say, cat burglar, uh, Frank Hoheimer. Which is really an alias, I believe, uh -huh. for the man that actually did do it. Um, what is his type? Uh, Savoyd was his real name. He was the real thief. Right. That's what they, that's what they say. It was uh, the real thief's name was, what did you say it was? Savoyd? What? I believe it was S I B O I. I read it somewhere in one of the articles. I have the I have Wikipedia open on my other screen here. Um, but yes, he was an alias, right? He, he was a it was a pen name. And he owed he, money to the IRS and everything, so he he did it through somebody else. <laughs> he was in prison. Really? Yeah. So he wrote the. Wow, I never heard that part of that. Um, 
yeah, I never heard that uh, that part. That's that's pretty interesting. So he was in prison when they had the when he wrote the book, and then he put it under somebody else's name and blah, so that he could collect they wrote the money. The book for him, kind of like Denny Griffin. Denny okay, Griffin. okay. Got you. Here's my story. And then, okay. So, so he wrote this book, and let me see if I can pull up a an image of this cover yeah, of this. Buy one now. They're about three hundred bucks. <laughs> really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So here it is. Let me. It's only like one hundred eighty pages too. <laughs> Really? That's it, yeah. huh? Short book. Okay, so here, let me let me just get this up and so we can we can see what I'm looking at here. And so there's the cover of the book, and that's Home Invaders, and that is a picture of Frank Hoheimer. Uh and I guess you see his real name was let me uh here Frank Hoheimer. Yeah, John Siebold. Siebold? John Siebold, right, criminal, uh, American jewel thief. Siebold was in prison in South Wood State Prison in New Jersey from 95 to 2001. So he did six years then. But the, the book was written in 70s, in the 75. 1975, I think, is when it was written. The Confessions of a Cat Burglar. So uh, anyway. Um, they started shooting the movie like in 1979. Oh, really? I watched him shoot a lot of the scenes out of that movie. So some of those places that, that we saw in that, that I saw anyway, watching it last night, uh, because there was so much of that, that looked like that. It, I mean, it reminded me of when I was a, a little kid, uh, the, the vehicles and the era, the whole deal. Uh, but those streets, some of them looked very familiar to me, but maybe just a little older, like looked like, uh, some of it was shot on, on lower Wacker drive. It Downtown, was right. It was some of it was on Lincoln Avenue, uh, by the Blues Bars. Arminetti Liquors was in there. I saw that Arminetti Liquors. Now, but wait, but wait. Uh, uh, Rush Street is that in? Is that where he brings her out of the place and puts her in the car where he no, the, the trying, girlfriend, no, the that's, waitress? That's on Lincoln Avenue. That's in the Blues Bars there in, on Lincoln Avenue. It was on the uh, Lincoln Avenue is on an angle, so it would be on the west side of Lincoln Avenue. Okay, so. He had a car too on that seat. <laughs> um, Rob Snyder, no, never read the book "Killing the Mob" by Bill O'Reilly. Have you read? No, no. I don't like uh, Bill O'Reilly. <laughs> Everything I, I've seen him write, uh, I watched him do other books. I read other books, and he never read his own, or he never wrote them. He had a, a, a staff of people that wrote his books for him, put his name on it. So, right. Arminetti's is a name I haven't heard in years. DPN just said, uh, I never heard of it un <laughs> until Red said it the other day. It said, oh, Arminetti's is in there. And I went, well, what the hell's Arminetti's? But when I was watching the movie, I saw Arminetti's in the movie. You pointed that, said that. There were a lot of other places, too. That, that, plating, they... shop, that plating shop is on Elston Avenue, where the bridge is, where it comes over on the bridge. Uh -huh. That's right on Elston Avenue. I had a... The Rush Factory was back behind it. <laughs> right okay. There. Okay. Um, so, so uh, uh, amongst that, we saw Jim Belushi in the movie as well, uh, and playing one of the uh, one of the 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 James Con character Frank. This called Frank, and I guess they're saying like Frank, like Frank Hoheimer. Is my guess. Yeah. All right, so I, I don't know if I actually didn't read the credits at the end of the movie to see. So um, anyway, uh, the the movie was in itself quite interesting and entertaining. Uh, some of the things, I guess, were pretty realistic because they had that John Santucci in the movie. Not only in it, but it was consulting as well. And Well, Dennis Farida helped too. Okay. So both of them. As a matter of fact, he quit his job after that <laughs> and said, there's more money in movies. I'm going to Hollywood. That's awesome. How cool to be, you know. Uh, yeah. David Grimp. Yeah. Arminetti's was a liquor store in case you guys didn't know. Yes. If you haven't seen the movie that uh, Arminetti is uh, in there. So, 
So it's, it's pretty cool. It's a chain. Uh, there was a dozen of them, I think. Scott H. says, here's one fact. They used real gangsters. Well, I... I I guess that that John Santucci was a a, a burglar and didn't do what, what's this what's this that you said about James Kahn almost getting in trouble? Yeah, um, they actually had an illegal wiretap, and he was talking to somebody and said that he was going on the score, a real score, uh, with the crew, so he could see how it was done, and uh, the police picked him up. And they told him, they said, if you go on that score, it was in the newspapers. They said, if you go on that score, you're going to jail. That's it. So he didn't go. I mean, now I, crazy. Yeah, I, want, I want to make a comment, too. Uh, James Kahn was the only guy that I knew personally that showed up at Tony Spilaccio's funeral. He went to Tony Spilaccio's funeral. Really? Yes. James Kahn was at Tony Spilaccio's funeral. Yes, he was. Is that a fact? That's a fact. That's that's pretty damn interesting. Why? What was the connection with? What was the? I don't know. He used to hang out at the bird's nest. So when he was in town, he'd go to the bird's nest at uh, uh, Billy Kensall place at uh, Wells and uh, uh, Division. Okay. And you, he used to have Burton place at Burton and Wells, and then he moved down to the other place and built a whole new building okay and for, for let me just share this uh share this place up used here. to hang out in there i used to hang out in there kozo used to hang out in there a lot of people used to hang out there. joey lombardo was there you just mentioned that dennis farina was also in the movie and quit well, his job do... yeah it's a, it's a damn good picture of him isn't it <laughs> for those of you that don't <laughs> know like dennis that, farina <laughs> Yeah, that's one of those. Uh, that's one of those really great headshots, you know. Entertainment, you, uh, you, you know, people get those headshots and they use them for fifty years, right? <laughs> Who knows? It's on the internet. It may be there for a thousand years. Right. So, uh, so, so in this movie, I'm and I'm looking for the the gentleman's name. He's uh, so Tuesdays the girl he's dating, and then and then listen to these names. So. So Frank gives the diamonds to his fence. He does his big job in the beginning of his movie. And his friend is Joe Gags. Okay, Joe Gags. Really? This is this is his and then and then the boss's names that owns this plating company um, that Gags is working for is a Tiglia. Like a Tiglia, right? A, a Tiglia. A Tiglia, a Tiglia, however you want to say Tiglia. Right. By Tom Signorelli. All right, so uh, so that and, and 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 that guy, which I I just can't let me let me just pull up a good picture of him here to show you. But this guy is supposed to be one of the Chicago bosses. Well, not bosses, but you know he's a higher up in the uh, uh, in the rankings. He's like a crew chief. He is on crew. Right. Let me look for, hold on, settings, jewels. In the movie, he said, I put down all the merch in the city. He said, all these fences that you go to, uh -huh. Salazar, and he mentions, it goes down the list, and he said, you know, he said, I put down, they put it down to me on the bank. And this is, this is, I, I wish I get a bigger picture, but this is what his face looks like. He's got that nose that goes straight down, and they put glasses on him in the movie. So he looks really, yeah, see, with the glasses, with the nose straight down. Come on, this is like... Uh, it reminds me of Joey Yupa. Yeah, the way his, his, his face is, the, the glasses they use, the whole thing, it definitely... Look at look at the way his look, the look of his face, you know? It's just... Yeah, anyway, they did a great job casting uh, in, in this movie. That, that's without a doubt. Um, it was really interesting. Now, the story, as far as the story goes, is uh, quite fictional. Uh, I mean, maybe real things that could have happened, but is this an actual confession of, is this a, a recording of this Frank Hoheimer's life? I don't know, but too many things are coincidental, like where they did the first score in the beginning. It shows the alley, and that was at 5 South Wabash. Okay. And 
anybody that knows Five South Wabash is um, a bunch of uh, jewelry stores. That's where Levinson's was. Okay. At Five South Wabash. I used to go in there and buy things. They had guards going, uh, police officers uh, during the season. And uh, he had to get frisked and everything to get in the building. Oh, my gosh. Wow. They had a lot of money and a lot of diamonds, a lot of uh, jewelry, mm -hmm. watches. So, yeah, so that's pretty interesting and a coincidence, uh, I suppose. And, yeah, De De Dennis is the image of an 80s Chicago cop. He actually used to be a Chicago cop. So I understand. And then he turned actor after a he got crooked Chicago cop. <laughs> DPN saying this. Oh, he was a crooked. Dennis was a crooked Chicago cop. He certainly was. Really? Okay. So that's uh, that's pretty interesting. Scott H. You agree? Yes. He uh, uh, this Prosky looks just like uh, Iupa. So def definitely. Um, uh, yeah. So Joe S. You mention it. And it's funny because, all right, so I set a gym up in my garage, and I have a TV up in the side. Now, and last night, Red knows because I've been telling Red about it while I've been said it's taken me a week now to build this damn thing. But anyway, so I'm out there, and I'm finishing the final things, cleaning up my workbench, and I'm watching the movie. And I'm watching the movie, and the first, well, I don't know, the first 10 minutes of it, there's not a word said. It's all music. Right, Joe? It's all music. And I'm listening to it, and I go, wow, that sounds interesting. And I glance up, and it says, you know, soundtrack music, and it says Tangerine Dream. Now, Tangerine Dream, I don't know who gave me an album or whatever, but, yeah, I like the music. I like the music. I've heard the group before. And uh, and yeah, they're kind of they're kind of out there, but they were there was a great soundtrack for a thriller like that. I thought anyway. It, at the time, it was a great soundtrack. I mean, yeah, very unusual. <clears throat> uh, Jewelers Row. That's where Frank Collada pulled the heist, and the jewelry was gone. Jewelers Row. That was in the movie as well. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Right, and the burn bar thing. That's really real. Build me a, a tool yeah. that I can open up the safe. Okay, now, Re uh, Red, as far as the, I need a baby, and they won't give me a baby. I and, got oh, you want a baby? What do you want? Do you want a boy or do you want a girl? I got a kick oh. out of They went to the adoption agency, the state agency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, I made yeah, this and everything. <laughs> that was hilarious. That was really hilarious. Um yeah, I thought so. But come on, it's close to reality. Is that anywhere close? Which could some now look, I know there's human trafficking that goes on in this world. It yeah, goes on day, all over the place. And that day it was very common to do what was done. Really? That was a common thing, huh? Yeah. Wow. There were young ladies got, got pregnant and uh they didn't want anybody they gave up the baby for adoption immediately. There was no abortions then. Wow. They didn't have abortions then. Just a totally different era, different time. You didn't. Uh, there wasn't a Planned Parenthood every two blocks. <laughs> I don't even know if I'm allowed to say that on here. But um, so DPN, by the way, uh, since you're still watching, I just wanted to uh, throw it out there to everyone that uh, I'm going to be doing another interview with uh, with him uh, later on today. So uh, so stay tuned. Uh, we're gonna be talking some more uh more chicago he grew up there it was all kinds of the ins and outs and we shot hey, some video how you doing guy so it's um uh, yeah anyways just me do you remember the club talk of the town red yes okay i don't know if that was shown in that movie or not but uh, i don't think it was no tony spilatro adopted a kid by paying a woman 10 grand that's a fact no are you kidding me now Vincent. Seriously. Vincent yeah. was... I knew he was adopted, but what's the... He paid... Where is the... Uh, uh, all right. I've never heard this before. Uh, how how do you know this to be a fact? I guess I really don't because I didn't see the birth certificate or anything else. But it was talked about many times. Wow. See, Scott H., I never heard that. Red, I've never heard this before. And I, I, I mean, I guess that you wouldn't hear about 
Anyway, that could happen. Uh, I guess so. That was a common thing. And what about at the end when he's going to take the kid back? Is he, how much closer? How close to reality do you think that that could? I don't know how that'd go. I really don't. But things were very corrupt in those days, and uh, um, he could have done it. I mean, he had a lot of power. It, it seemed like Money. a pretty good. Yeah, it seemed like a pretty good uh, picture as far as describing how somebody could get tied into that, not just being being like an associate or being just a, a, a low-level burglar or whatever, and then suddenly you get approached, hey, you know, we noticed your work, you're pretty good, you know, we got some scores lined up, you want to come work for us, and then and the next thing you know, you're making more and more money, and you're more connected. And I have something to say about that. I wa okay. You know, I'll, I've watched it several times. But watching again, I, I really took notice that in the beginning, he said two, three scores, and that's it. And he said, well, I'll think about it. But later on in the movie, he calls him after he sees Oakland, and he says, you're on. So he kind of agreed to two or three scores. Hmm. But he had really only wanted to do one, and he was home free. Yeah. Well, you know, how many, how many movies, though, how many movies have been made, though, and I don't know before this movie or after this movie or whatever, but uh, how many movies about this is my last big job and then I'm out, no more, stealing, you know, and it always goes wrong somehow. Or it goes some twisted which way crazy, like the one with, uh, with um, uh, uh, damn, he plays like he's got a, like he's got a problem, um, uh, Edward... Edward Norton. Norton. Ed yeah, Norton. yeah, yeah, yeah. He plays like he's got a mental mental problem, you know, and he's working at the museum. And he, oh, okay, okay, check it. Uh, nice to see that was you. In Montreal. Movie, you know, and that he's was in Montreal, and that was with uh, De Niro. De Niro, right? It was De Niro and him. It's called the heist De or the Niro, thief for this. My last score. I'm out of right, here. Right, right, right. They're gonna steal that gold staff, and he ends up tricking him at the end. And Norton was gonna take off with it, and it you was know, a great, great movie. But there are always these big last one more score, and then I'm out. And that's not well. That's basically what the thief was. Is was that movie? Um, DPN James Taglia. Yeah, Frank told a story on. Coffee with Colada about a robbery he did in that building. Yeah, that was uh, that was it. And, and and I wish I had the clip to play on that. I don't have that uh, loaded up, but that's a uh, yeah, a robbery he did in that building. I remember. Mm-hmm. Talked about it. Sure did. So it was a pretty. Um, let's see. Let me let me just. Sorry, I'm just gonna. The thief's theme. Yes, I'm telling you guys, the soundtrack to that was really. Um, yeah, it was really, really uh, kind of out there. So, uh, yeah, Scott H., it's a lesson that if once you get in with the mob, you're in for life. They literally own you and everything you own. It's basically what the movie is saying as well, yes. So, uh, Rob Snyder, fact or fiction, was Frank Sinatra made man. It has nothing to do with the thief, but I don't think so. No, he was Red? Yeah, he okay. Was. So, um, anyway, I hope that all of you guys are having a great day today on this Redness Day. And uh, hit the like button if you're just coming in. Be sure to smash the like button. Like I say, um, I will be uh, doing a little interview later on today with DPN. We're going to talk about some uh, interesting things. He is, uh, uh, he is uh, from Chicago, from Elmwood Park. Uh, yeah, Ryan Brown again, guys, if you, if you're tuning in and you're just tuning in now, or you're watching this later, um, you know, say a prayer for Ryan and his, uh, his family. He lost his mother today. So bless you, Ryan. Really? Andrew. Uh, sorry about that. Um, DPN, did you know Adam is the best magician in the world at the floating cigarette trick? True story. Now that's hilarious. DPN. I'm the best magician and a floating cigarette in the world, yet this is me. I, I don't believe I'm going to do this. This was me on stage, South Suburban College, back in Thornton, Illinois. And I think it's in Thornton or Thornwood, Thorn, one of those thorns. Anyway, uh, I was doing a, a show when I was a kid. This is me tripping over a microphone cord on stage and whacking myself in the head with a mic. 
Yeah, look at that look on my face. Like, oh. Yeah, it's it's pretty bad. So anyway, that's that that's okay. I started out like that. I ended up more like this. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I had a mullet, and now here I am. So anyway, thanks, DPN. I look forward to talking to you later on uh, today. So back to the thief, Red. Back to the thief. Um, what? else did you th I thought that Willie Nelson being the mentor and all that to him and at the end you know he gets him out of the out of the prison and he's in the hospital dying and he's, he's about to die and he says lean in right what do you think he whispered to him he said in the movie what he whispered to him what was it did I, I must have missed you. it then thank you thank, thank you. you for getting me out okay the night I, I did. didn't want to die in there I didn't want to die in there I want to die out here and that's something else that he talks about that was very interesting. And that was the whole um, James Kahn when he puts Wednesday, the girl, into the car outside the club. And he's like, what do you think I do day in and day out? I'm a thief, right? And then he talks about I being... I change suits like people change shoes. <laughs> I change cars as fast as people change shoes. Yeah. His ring. He talks about his ring. Yeah, he talks about all that. Okay, so... But he goes into that, and then he talks about being in prison and about how you just have to not care and how you have to. It, it was a really. Well, he said that's the Oasis on Eden's Avenue. They filmed that at the Oasis on Eden's Avenue. Oh, yeah. That's what he said. Uh, they brought the cream, in and, and she, he said he asked for new cream. And the waitress says, what's the matter? And he says, what's the matter? It looks like cottage cheese. <laughs> Supposedly, that he said was also his favorite scene, James Kahn. So it was his favorite scene in his career was that diner scene. So pretty um pretty interesting. So it was neat. A lot of it was shot in Chicago. So if you guys haven't seen it, um you know what we should do, Red. I think ninety percent of that was shot in Chicago. You you know you know what we should do? All right, guys. So back in November, November twenty second, South Holland. Thank you, Sean. South Holland, yes. Uh, that's where the college was. So, um, uh, wow, I just lost my train of thought. Yeah, this is what we should do this weekend. How about this weekend? Because we haven't done it since November 22nd. We did a watch-along party, and we watched Casino. I had Lewis I over, and we watched Casino. Um, I, I watched The Thief. If you guys want to do, do you know what? Let's see. Just throw it in the comments. Put in a yes right now if you guys want to do that. If that even interests you, or if you guys are like, ah, who wants to do? Who's that? on with you when you watched uh, Casino? Uh, uh, Lewis. Lewis. Lewis was. Yeah, that was yeah Lewis. Lewis was. He actually came over and we sat and we watched the the movie outside. It was a beautiful day out. I said, why sit inside? Said, Let's go Smoked outside. Smoke a cigar. <laughs> Smoke a cigar. Watch Casino. Three hours. It was a fun watch party, and then. And it's and it's gotten a bunch of views since then, and people are still doing it. They're still catching the thing and following along with it. So, all right. So there's one, two, two people. I mean, Taglia. Uh, yeah, there was an a Taglia, and now there's a Taglia that wants to do this. And and an Aniki, An An Key, An Key, An Key Taglia. Anyone else? Yes, Scott H. Uh, Cheryl Mann. Yes. Yes. I, I don't know. I mean, if there's enough of you that want to do it, what do you guys think? Like Saturday night, evening time? We could do it in the evening. Do like a like a, like an eight eight central. Yeah. Eight central. Um what do you what do you uh hell yeah, if you guys are gonna do this with us, then we'll do it. Red, do you wanna do it? It's okay with me if, okay. if they wanna do it. Give us a, a sign. A, put a well, one if you want to watch it. Yeah, so, no, they're all they're all writing yes. They all want to. Scott H. Yeah, we'll have another watch party. Mickey Griggs, yes. David Grip, Dazzling Urbanite, yes. Cheryl Mann, yes. Everybody's putting in yes. Uh, Outfit Boss, Sean Pender. You guys are all on board for this. <laughs> so let's to hell. Why not? We got to have fun, right? Got to have fun. What's it all and, about exactly, and uh, you know, distract yourself from the every day to day this that. Keith Helton. Keith Helton, James Kahn was put in his place by Carmine Persico for putting who el 
for Persico for putting who else? Gianni Russo on the spot over Junior's girlfriend, huh? What the hell? Jeez. Jeez. More Gianni Russo jokes. Oh my God. Uh, Scott in Saturday. Let's do it. On my channel too. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Don Berlin. Don Berlin. Good news. Columbia gas line back up and gas is back or at least enough to get to the computer to watch the thief vote. Yes. <laughs> That's cool. On board, John O. Uh, John O. Uh, yes. Red, how long were you in Moline? Moline High School. I grew up in that area. Any outfit connections in Davenport and Rock Island Red Light Stripper Clubs? Um, I was I was only a kid when I was there as a, a sophomore in high school. Um, and I didn't I wasn't in uh, my although we lived in East Moline. And I went to UTHS, United Township High School. Um, but uh, did I see any strip clubs there? No, I wasn't looking for any. I was busy working as I wrote my book. I was working all the time. And uh, roller skating at Skateland on 3rd Street. And uh, I forget what the other. It's so long. That's a long time ago. I was only 16 years old then. <laughs> Uh, so it, 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 that was way back when I saw another comment here and it was something that, uh, that you, yeah, you, you, you mentioned this and I'm glad, I'm very glad that, uh, Conroy brought this up because you mentioned this to me the other day. You said that peanuts was involved with Michael Mann somehow. Yes, he was. And he wrote, I see it was directed by Michael Mann. I saw in a Chicago paper, he was working on a Pansco movie, peanuts, Pansco. And do you know if man is still thinking about doing it? And how do you no, feel? No, he's not. As a matter of fact, when, when Paul was alive, I knew Paul quite well you know, after when he was out, before he turned on uh, War Wire on Basil and, and you know, for the racetrack robbery and everything. And he was on a, um, he was on a, a show in Indiana, a small station. It was called Just Between Us with Jenny Jones. Oh she my was God! Starting out way back when, and uh, she did an interview with him, and he mentioned in the interview that Michael Mann was interested in doing something with them, uh -huh. and so it never came to any volition. Okay, that's crazy. I did magic on Jenny Jones. Did you really? <laughs> I did. I did magic for Jenny Jones. I should say I warmed up the audience during when we what went to that? one of the filmings. We went to one of the filmings, you know, one of the recording things, and I started doing magic for the thing, and she walked out, and she, I was kind of, like, upstaging her, you know, kind of stepping on her time. So she, like, you know, like any entertainer would do, she kind of... Anyway, it's it, yeah, it was fun. So I, I didn't end up, like, on-on, but it was, it was <laughs> there. Okay, so James Kahn, Scott H., James Kahn was in a car once with Robert Kennedy and Richard Lawton when they were pulled over by the cops. That's a fact. And he, he fled. No, that's Tom Selleck. That's Tom Selleck, not James Conn. But he fled, the, he fled the scene because he jumped out of the car because of the accident, because he didn't want to be one of the police were there when they made out the police report for him being involved with mobsters. Tom that, Selleck. Yeah. Yes. Okay, it's Tom Selleck, not not James Conn, Scotty. Yeah, according to uh, to Red here, uh, Don Berlin, uh, and just in the nick of time, wifely person nearly ran out to get to hospital to see patients. Anyway, vote for thief. Um, so, so, uh, <laughs> so I guess we'll do this on Saturday. I mean, there's enough people here saying they want to do it. You want to sit for two hours? Now, look. We'll put in the description of this video a link. Click on it. Go to um, go to Amazon and, and on Amazon Prime. If you have Amazon Prime, you can watch it. Right? Uh, actually, sorry, you have to have HBO. HBO. You yeah. have to be on Amazon Prime and then subscribe to HBO to watch but it. You can watch free. it on Hulu and you can watch it on what's the other one? Uh, um, Is it on Netflix YouTube. right now? It's on YouTube too. It's on YouTube. It's also it on. Is it on YouTube? Is it a, 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 for a pay experience? You know, do you pay yes. for it? And okay, yes. and you can watch it straight through. Yes. All right, because I know YouTube sometimes they give up movies and they're like, here, you can watch the and Terminator, but you got to have commercials. Cut. There's only one minute, only one minute more, and the director's cut to the regular cut. 
<laughs> is that it's just one minute? Well, yeah, I checked it out. Um, so, uh, Red, here, this is off the wall. Why not? Uh, Lisa, I, I don't believe I've ever said your name. Uh, Ketelar. And I hope that I said Ketelar correctly uh, and didn't didn't butcher that one too. But where did you live in Illinois when growing up, Red? All over. Um, I, I'll give you a chronological order. Uh, when my parents, um, when my, the, my first memory was on Larmy Avenue. Uh, it was um, federal housing projects for people that got back from uh, World War II. My dad got a house there. And then they were tearing that down. We moved to Avers and Montrose. And then from Avers and Montrose, things kind of heated up. And in 1955, my parents moved to Wheeling, Illinois. And from Wheeling, Illinois, we stayed out there quite a bit. And we moved to Prospect Heights, uh, Country Gardens. And um, 30, 30 Stonegate Drive. I remember the addresses. Um, then we went to uh, Moline, or we lived in East Moline, but the truth of the matter is we went to Moline or Quad Cities. At that time, they called Tri-Cities. But uh, from there, we, I moved back to Cicero, and I lived in Cicero. And from then on, I, I wasn't a kid anymore. I went in the Marine Corps. And after that, I was all over the place. I must add, I, we used to make jokes about it because I used to drive places and say, I used to live over here. I used to live over here. And people say, did you ever stay in one spot very long? <laughs> All right, cool. So, Lisa, I hope that answers your question. Man on the moon, what do you mean you don't get a high from us anymore? <laughs> hey, good, how you doing, guys? It's good to see you, man on the moon. Um, and uh, glad you guys are all following along. Jim B. Red, curious if you know John Puntillo, who operated an adult bookstore or Puntillo for the outfit in Chicago? No. Name doesn't no, ring a not. bell. I did not. He probably... Uh, I don't know. I couldn't even speculate. Wow. Okay, so we got to pick a time, Red, that we're going to do this on Saturday. Okay, pick a time. <laughs> well, what? Um, let's 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 try this. So Saturday, I'm on the the West Coast. So so evening to me is really late. To, if we do eight Central time, that's going to be six o'clock here. So 6 o'clock on Saturday until about 8 o'clock Saturday night. I hope you guys better show up. All <laughs> you guys better show up that said yes in this. If we turn this damn movie on and sit here, Red and I, because Red will watch it on his TV. I'll watch it. on. We've all done this before. We know how this works. You're going to have to get a copy of it to watch it so that you can see uh, the movie and hear the movie. I can't broadcast the movie because that would be a copyright violation. But... We can all sit here and watch it at the same time. I'll put a counter on the screen so that you guys know about where we are in the movie. So if you tune in a couple of minutes late, you guys can queue up to where we are. Uh, or if you way, have devices, if you have a computer and a what's called that are running at the same time, you can watch it on, like I said, on uh, YouTube, and then actually watch it and you know be in the show too. Yeah, yeah. So you can comment as we're commenting because Red will point out, oh, that's so and so's, and oh, this street is this one, and this way you guys are right along in the movie. And if you have questions, of course, you can see it. Mickey, you're on the East Coast, so is a 9 p.m. start time work for you, Mickey? Because I don't want to start it without Mickey. Got to make sure Mickey's been here forever. So if, if Mickey is, uh, it would be cool, Cindy. I'll ask Lewis if he could, uh, if he wants to, because. Well, what I can do, because what I'm going to be doing is bringing in uh, Red and myself, just like we are right now going live, I could also bring in a third person to watch along too. So, Joe S., yes, The Thief, it had an incredible soundtrack. Who just said it? I think Scott H. said it was like a EDM for the 70s, right? I guess your heart pumping. You know? Yeah, yeah, and it's it's a, it's a good it's good stuff. So, it's, uh, it's really cool. Um, Tony Padula. When you get a panic attack, Red, how do you deal with it? I don't get them anymore. I, I'm on medication. I don't get them anymore. How did I deal with it? Yeah. Uh, not well. Not well at all. I okay. always I was dying, you know, so I just kind of 
at the end, or at the, when I was having them towards the end, uh, they told me to breathe through a paper bag because you're actually getting too much oxygen. You need more carbon dioxide in your body. And that's what makes your heart beat so fast. And uh, in my case, it put my blood pressure went real high and um, it hit my optic nerve and I couldn't see. I kind of went blind for a while. Oh, geez. Sometimes I'd pass out. Cindy. Okay, sorry. Wow. Thank God they don't have it. I haven't had one happen to me in <clears throat> since 1985. Okay. So that uh, uh, Lisa Kettelar said uh, uh, she uses Z Xanax. What I take. Oh, you take the Xanax. Or I take the generic. Apro apro I don't know. Ap apoplasm, how do you pronounce it? <laughs> I, I, I have no idea. Um, okay, so Cindy, Cindy, you got here a little bit late. So James Kahn, the movie The Thief. And there's a couple of guys like uh, Farina and uh, Santucci who are play in the movie who were cops, crooked cops, and, uh, of course, uh, criminal. That's John Santucci. And so now they, they play in the movie. They're acting in it. They also were a consulting for it. It was all shot in Chicago. And I just watched it last night for the first time, and it was, it was fantastic. I mean, it was captivating, definitely great, and it was Michael Mann's first uh, debut, his big debut, I should say. Um, James Belushi's in it. It's a fantastic movie. And for those of you who are just... Other than The Godfather, I think that was uh, the biggest film that had come out about the mob, period. It was. I heard the first time. time. It was hyped time. up because it was Chicago. <laughs> it was really done in Chicago. Okay. Okay. So Pam saying Kalana Pin is better than Zan. You guys, are you really serious? Kalana Pin is even... the big brother. It's a big brother to that drug. This has turned into anxiety medication it's much, talk. It's much more strong. It's very strong. <laughs> We're supposed to be talking about the thief, and you guys are talking about what's the best email, medications. Me, email me, honey. Holy <laughs> cow. Um, Don Berlin, my wife treats patients with panic attacks. can be very serious with all sorts of secondary complications. Poor red panic attacks, yeah. So I don't I, have them anymore. I'm cured. <laughs> what was the cure? The medication. I, I have a genetic defect. I have a hot spot on the base of my brain that I inherited. Gotcha. It's epileptic. Ah, okay. I went through a PET scan, and then they found out what it was when I went through the PET scan, and they said, oh, we can fix it. No problem. Hmm. Good psychiatrist. Okay, okay so, uh, guys, uh, by the way... By the way, in case you're just tuning in, um, yeah, I'm still doing the keto. Um, I still am losing weight. And the reason I haven't posted on my lifestyle channel about uh, about doing the keto is because I have been so damn busy building a gym in my garage. I'm not kidding you. I got... <laughs> I, I'm listen. laughing because the real reason, my opinion, is the real reason you haven't done any videos about it is because... It's got you in ketosis, and you're running around like a, a rat a, or a mouse in a, in a, a hamster wheel, you know? So, so, <laughs> so, I don't have time for that. Oh, I forgot it. <laughs> my God, so much energy. So I got a, I got a, I got a hammer string, uh, sorry, a weeder um, squat rack with the pull-down attachment. The pull It's a $1,200 setup. Allie found it online, found one used guy selling it 300 bucks. I said, offer him 250. He said, take it. I couldn't believe it. The thing's barely been used. So we drove across town, picked up that. My friend and I brought that in. The, now my garage was a disaster to begin with. Okay. And then Allie's like, you know, the only kind of really cardio I like to do is elliptical riding and elliptical machines, unless you have a commercial really good one, they're, they're crap. So, uh, so again, Allie went on the hunt as women do, they gather and she went and gathered information from the internet about everybody who's selling everything. And then she decided to go, ah, this is a good deal right here and showed it to me and i said there's no way and we can't fit it into a gym when i can't it's just and not picking it up i said it'll be if it's meant to be it's meant to be ask him if he can deliver it because nobody's going to deliver something like that right that thing so, weighs a lot 
30 minutes later, this guy's pulling up in his truck, offloading it into the house. Okay. <laughs> Got that. This is a $5,000 machine. Got it for 500 bucks. So basically, I put a whole gym together down in this garage for less than $1,000. You've got a gym in your garage yes. with a big screen TV, a flat screen, so you can work out and keep your mind busy. It's little. It's like a 20-inch TV down in the in the garage. Yeah. So, but anyway, yeah, so that's, that's what, that's what I've been doing in between that and cooking and this and that, and I'm doing windows on my mom's house and I'm in swamp coolers and it's just the list goes on and on and on and on. So anyway, um, it is, uh, Keith health and I only drink, I drink liquid only. Um, yeah, messy garage equals panic attack. Go out. <laughs> Someone <laughs> asked hilarious. me uh, where, what date did, uh, Vincent die? Oh, um, I couldn't see. find anything on the internet. Tony's son. Yes, I'm looking right now. The last and thing I found was that in 2013, he was at the Mob Museum. No, that can't be the right Vincent. No. Yeah, it is. Vincent. No, I'm just, I mean, I'm, oh, I'm saying, um, yeah. I'm looking at a Spilatro, Vincent J., and it says the age 72 of Las Vegas, formerly Chicago, beloved husband of Marie, father of, I'm sorry, I don't want to read anything out loud here that I'm not. Um, I actually, I put a photo. There isn't anything on the internet. I look. This isn't, this isn't the same person. I don't know. But I got to say, I, I'm really careful about, I put some, I got an, I, I was telling Red about them. Now, I'm not going to say who or what. Okay, but I, uh, Gary Mushinsky, I will show you pics of the gym and go check out my my other channel, my Adam Flowers, and you can. That's where I'm going to be vlogging about the fitness anyway. This is more for just the mob stuff that we're going to be doing here, um, and 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 then I have a channel making videos and all. That, but look at the uh, other channel there, Sunny. There was another thief movie made in '71. Richard Crenna, Crenna. yeah, was the star. I now. Okay, see, Sonny's going to send us down another rabbit hole. All right, let me go watch that movie. Hey, let's all watch it together. <laughs> um, yes, so uh, let me, I'm just going through the, um, just going through the, uh, the comments. Guys, give me a second. Uh, yeah, Lisa, Lisa Kettlar, last time I was in Las Vegas, one of the buses, I thought we hit a freaking skunk. Um, yeah, there's a lot of the the grow fact, uh, you know, grow houses out here um, for the dispensaries and all, in, in the, right in the middle of Vegas too. So, um, I would love to see it with you guys. Jay Murphy, awesome. Hey man, official member. Uh, yes, uh, Saturday. So that's what I. Th and, and did did Mickey Griggs ever get back and say yes or no about that? I did not see that response in the uh, in the questions. Because you said you're on the East Coast, and I said we'll have to start at nine o'clock with you, and we don't want to leave you behind. So, um, does that work? I, I'm looking back; I don't see your response though. Um, while in Vegas, have you ever went and saw Lance Burton perform? Conroy, yes, I did. I got to go see Lance. Um, I, I saw his show a couple of times. I have a picture uh, with Lance, and I when I was about eighteen. I was about eighteen, and then. Later on, when I was performing at the Vegas Magic Theater, which was at the gold, um, at the, not the Golden Nugget, the G Gold Rush, Gold Coast, sorry, the Gold Coast, gold Coast. across from the Palms, right? I was performing the show there, and, and Lance Burton came and watched me perform, which was pretty cool. And it was, and, and Siegfried was there as well, so was Amazing Jonathan. Um, so it was kind of neat to get to perform for them, uh, as well as kind of, kind of cool. Tony, uh, I'm not going to answer that this on this broadcast. <laughs> why red, why didn't the outfit make their sons join like in New York? Why didn't the outfit make their sons join like in New York? That's the answer. I don't know. <laughs> okay. John O red, the Kurt Hansen end was quite horrible. Was not expecting that in the book. Yeah. Right, and, and we talked about doing a show on that, and uh, I think we talked about it. We've talked about it on here before about him, or to have. I think right, the veterans yeah. hanging in the canvas. 
That's well, he awful. wasn't in the canvas. He was laying in bed, but he only had one arm, and his legs were amputated, and he was he had a yep. Yep. bowl like this, yep. and he was eating out of the bowl with with the nub. And every time I talked to him, he said, "Yes, yeah, 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 yeah." And I said, "You know who this is? Yeah, who is it? Yeah." <laughs> I knew he was gone. He was out to lunch. What are you eating? Yeah. <laughs> uh, John Santucci was in Thief, Miami Vice, and Crime Story on TV. Okay, TC, thank you. I'm so glad somebody said it because I would have forgotten. Also, was De- Dennis Farina was too. So, so John Santucci was in um, was in Miami Vice and The Thief, but Crime Story was a series, right? Wasn't that a series, a TV yes, series? It was. Okay, I need. I have not watched that. I've not seen that ever in my life. And in several times people have said, you've got to see that. So I'm, <laughs> I can't, I can't imagine. It. <laughs> I've not, I'm not seen it. They're like, you got to watch it. It's like the, this is what happened before casino, <laughs> you know, the, it's like the prequel to it or something is what people said. Mickey Griggs, that works for you. Okay, guys, it's done. It's this Saturday at uh, 8 PM central time, nine Eastern. Six, if you live on the West Coast, and if you're in the mountains, well, if you can't figure out what time it starts, I'm not going to help you with that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Joe Clark, Red's laugh starts me laughing. Yeah, I know. Me too. It's uh, contagious. It's infectious. Right? <laughs> Hello, Adam and Red from Greece. Keep the stories coming. Hey, Old Barn Shop. How's it going? And a shout out back out to Greece. Um, yes. That's great. Somebody all in Greece sitting there watching. What time is it in Greece? <laughs> yeah, what time? Right now it's got, it was at four in the morning. It's uh, uh, Old Barn Shop, Pleasantville, Iowa. Sorry, let me just go through these comments. Um, my God, the, the, crime story. Del Shannon's Runaway is the opening credits. Who does somebody do did somebody? I just heard that somewhere. I thought, run, 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 run. Yeah, run. no, yeah, my little. <laughs> run. Hey, don't sing it. That's a copyright infringement. Okay. Uh, <laughs> just, just relax, Red. It's okay. <laughs> Del Shane did great. other things called "Hats Off to Larry" and things like that. I remember very common in the '60s, early '70s. Uh, Tony Padula, Red. If you own, if you owed the outfit a million bucks and crazy Sam had you cornered, would you try and talk your way out or pull out your 38? I pull out my 45. (laughs) Yeah, there you go. Uh, So uh, questions, where did you go on the channel to support the channel or um, channel of using an iPhone or has that feature gone bye-bye? Don Berlin, when you're watching the video, swipe up. All right, swipe up on your your screen, and then it's you should get some. Yeah, there'll be some some options that'll come up for you to join or subscribe or and. <clears throat> sorry, as far as the the uh, as far as the subscription goes uh, to the channel, you may not be able to do that from an iPhone. I heard that somewhere along the line that you can't. That you have to do it from a desktop. iPhones don't have that option. At least that's what I understand. I'm sure they'll fix it down the line. So. <laughs> Sean, I'm glad you're enjoying the show. Romania in the house. Decibalis Rex. Decibalis Rex. How's it going? It's 11 p.m. in the UK. Joe, uh, good. Uh, Dom, yes, Del Shannon. It was a great show. It's a great show. I got I to check the show out. But, but this Saturday, this Saturday, which will be the 15th of May... <laughs> Did you see how I counted that really quickly in my head? <laughs> Red's laughing. He's like, 13, 14, 15. <laughs> 15th. It's got its three days from Redness Day. So that's Thursday, Friday. So anyway, um, yes. So that'll be this Saturday. So don't forget to tune in. Hit it's the like button. Saturday. <laughs> Saturday. Hit the like button, guys, if you're just coming in. If you're watching this, uh, hit the like button. It uh, gets it out there. And uh, I'm going to take a few more comments here. TC, the end credit features Farina, Bill Smitrovich, Smitrovich, and his squad at Super, and his squad at Superdog. Interesting. 
We have to look at the credits. We'll have to put a little list of things to uh, point out during the uh, during the movie. And if you guys have things, jot them down because you guys can make comments too while we're watching. Remember, we're all watching at the same time. John so. Roy said we have cool shirts. Oh, we yeah. Hey, thanks for that uh, compliment, Conroy. Well, it's very hot here. It's over, almost 90 degrees here. And I'm telling you, <laughs> I have the air conditioning on. <laughs> same deal. Same deal here. It is, uh, yeah, it's. Uh, it's tropical where I'm at. It's, <clears throat> it's, it's kind of hot here. Red, wasn't there a real corrupt cop in Chicago named William Brown? Bill Brown? I didn't know him. I didn't know him. But there are a lot of corrupt cops. I, if I had to go through the list of names, it'd be like going down the alpha list. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, Hill Street Blues used the Maxwell Street District headquarters as an exterior, but didn't film here. Right. They used the Hill Street B Blues headquarters? Right. Ah. That was on Maxwell Street. That station's been torn down years ago. Right. Huh. Interesting. So, awesome. You guys have any, uh, yeah, Hill Street Blues was filmed in Chicago, out, Outfit Boss. That was, uh, I remember when I was interviewing Elaine Smith and I read it in her book that she had to interact with the police at the Hill Street Blues headquarters. And that's what they called it, I guess, the Hill Street Blues. Uh, David Grip, is your DPN interview later going to be live? If so, what time? Good question, David. Um, I am going to be doing this. Let's see here. Anytime in the next, probably in an hour. I don't know if I'm going to do it live or not. Um, I'm going to have to talk to DPN and see uh, see what the, he wants to do uh, as well. So, because we're we're both going to be using it. So, one of my favorite Hill Street Blues, Lisa. <laughs> it's cool. So, that was really, that was really the uh, vice control division, Hill at uh, Maxwell Street. Mm -hmm. That's where they had vice control. So gambling, uh, prostitution, all that stuff came out of there. That's where it all supposed to. Be. Okay, got it. So, remember the streets of San Francisco in yes. the in the opening segment. They showed San Francisco streets, right? Right. Yeah, and out of everything, I, I just want to say. Everything that I can play on the keyboard, I there can was play. Michael Douglas, I believe. The streets of San Francisco. <laughs> that was with Michael Douglas, I believe. <clears throat> the streets of San Francisco. Right. Oh, I thought you were talking. I thought he was talking about in the beginning of Hill Street Blues when they were showing the cars. Oh yeah, no, going down well, the hill. Was California. that were, were those? I don't know. Maybe that was Chicago. I have no idea. No, it's done in California. Okay, so um, I never saw a hill like that in Chicago. <laughs> I worked here, Anthony Calarco. I worked at the Illinois MTRS where the movie Thief was shot. The Illinois MTRS. MTRS. Metropolitan. I don't know. Pam Rudnick loves the streets of San Francisco. How did we get from the thief to the streets of San Francisco? How did this happen, Rex? Somebody brought up the name San Francisco. Uh, this happened. I misunderstood it. All right. Well, anyway, uh, <laughs> this Saturday, guys, we're going to do uh, a watch party. Daz Dazzling Urbanite, thank you very much. Uh, very, very kind of you for uh, sending a super sticker. Appreciate it. Uh, the most realistic show was The Wire, made in Baltimore. And here we go to The Wire. <laughs> so anyway, hey, guys, it has been an awesome uh, day with you guys. And I hope that uh, I hope that. I hope that this right here, palm tree, has completely distracted you the entire time, especially when I sat just like this. And was like, hey, what's going on, everybody? You know what I mean? What's happening? Welcome to my vlog. I don't look crazy. No, not at all. Do I look crazy with this hairdo? Nah. Anyway, I'm going to have to pick a different uh, background next time. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Anyhow, hey, guys, it's been a lot of fun. Um, and if you if you missed it earlier, this is what I look like on stage when I trip over a microphone. 
You heard them all laughing at me too, didn't you? <laughs> I put that in there. I was like, every time I butcher a name, I'm going to play that right there. They have the head. They have cordless mics on nasties. No, I didn't have a, a cordless mics back then. They didn't have any. At least that time when I was working, I wasn't wearing a lav. Now I've worn lavs in the what year was that? And headset mics. Oh, what? that that happened in '94. Ninety four. Oh, they had the SDs, They had a little antenna on the bottom of them. Yeah. Well, well, at that time, they, that they theater, <laughs> that theater didn't have them, and I didn't have the budget to buy them. So, uh, see a Saturday, dazzling urbanite. Uh, you look like an ordinary millennial. Thanks, Scott H. I uh, appreciate that. And uh, DPN, I'm going to talk to you very soon. Adam, you didn't read the rest of my statement. Pam. What didn't I read? I need to look. I'm so sorry. I mm, I loved the streets of San Francisco. Oh, I was in love with Michael Douglas. Pam was in oh, love with okay. Michael Douglas. What woman wasn't in Douglas? Uh, in love with Michael Douglas. And the oh, first, first movie I saw him in was Jewel of the Nile. No, yeah. no, Romancing the Stone. Sorry, Romancing, Romancing the Stone. stone. Right. Jewel of the Nile was the second one. Romancing the Stone. That's that is one of the best. You know what? I'm going to start another channel. Danny DeVito. Danny DeVito. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm going to start another channel, okay? And Tedford Von Patriot. I'm going to start another channel that all I do is watch movies. I think it would be a very easy channel. Just yes, sit there and watch did. movies. God bless you. Um, you'll do anything for a laugh. Well, thank you very much, Scott. I think that Tedford Von Patriot... He just came in and you. Sorry, Ted, for that was for you. You missed it earlier. I tripped over the mic. Anyway, um, it has been a fun uh, hour with you guys, and I look forward to seeing all of you. Um, I, I, I oh my God, send cash quick, Tedford. <laughs> <laughs> Kevio, you're freaking hilarious, man. Like, you know? <laughs> My God. Star, Star Chamber was cool. Shannon Gleese was his wife. That's hilarious. We're going to go down the rabbit hole of movies now. I know, I know. That's what I'm saying. I should just start a channel. And I'm trying to say so, I, I didn't want to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Okay. Uh, the most underrated movie the same year The Godfather came out was Once Upon a Time in America. It didn't get a lot of splash, but if you watched it, it was a better movie than The Godfather was. Oh. Once Upon a Time in America. Once Upon a Time in America? Yeah. That's another, that's another thing I gotta, I gotta check into. Tedford, I was in love with Sharon Stone when her wooly booger winked at me. <laughs> <laughs> her wooly booger winked at me. That okay. was in, uh, that was in, uh, what was the name of that movie? Uh, with, that was Sharon Stone again, Michael Douglas. Come on. And she cried, uh, the, the leg thing. So did he get any time for the joy? What was the name of that movie? Which one? Basic Instinct. That's it. Yeah. Basic Instinct. Allie's downstairs yelling. I can hear her, even though I have my headphones in. Basic Instinct. Yes. So, uh, disorderly product news. So did he get any time for Joey the Clown, for the Joey the Tedford Von Patriot. Thank you very much. What, what a hell of a guy. Thank you very much for that. Appreciate you, uh, Tedford Von Patriot. Um, and I'm glad that you made it. We stayed on just a little while longer to make sure you showed up. I just He's want a true you to know. <laughs> You're awesome, man. Thank you so much. So, DPN, did he get time for the Joey the Clown thing? Uh, I, I, I must have missed this. You guys had a little. I don't understand what he's saying. Clarico, are you related to Anthony Clarico? Uh, Illinois Motors 9. Uh, 3939 North. Uh, yeah, okay. And then uh, DPN said, are you related to a Dominic from EP? And yes, I'm his oldest nephew. Okay, so you guys have a thing going on in the background. So, yeah, did he get any... <laughs> so no. like showing their like, conversation no. going on here. But Kevio, give me 10%, Adam. Hell, I already got a kick up. 20% to Joe. So, you know what I mean? Come on, guys. <laughs> no, anyhow, um, I you know, I didn't see Joe on here today say anything. I hope you're doing good, Joe, um, if you are watching this. And I hope you're doing well. 
Um, okay, so Once Upon a Time in America, mafia movie. Yeah, very. It's and it takes place in New York. It's about it's about something that it's very well done, extremely well done. Long, very long. Got got it. Got to watch it. Um, Tedford is our esteemed sponsor. Go Tedford. Hey guys, hit the like button too, by the way. Uh, and uh, yeah, one of the most underrated movies of all times. Yes. Is what it is. Red, any of your old crew still around? Is no. Red, is any of your, that thing of ours. No. All right, so, hey guys, that's it. We're going to wrap it up because uh, the day must go on and we have things to do and you guys I are going to be here. The first person that I know that's gone. Yeah. Crow, there you go, guys. Anyway, it has been fun. This Saturday, the 15th, 6 p.m. Pacific time. 8 p.m. Central. 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 8 p.m. Central time. All right. You you hear how I'm talking now? Central time. Y'all better get it. <laughs> <laughs> all y'all better get your your shit and, and and get your shit going. All right. <laughs> you hear? We hear. All right. Anyways, 8 p.m. Oh. Central time, 9 p.m. Eastern, and of course, if you live in the mountains, that would be 7 p.m. I'm going to fill you guys in on it in case you didn't know. So thank you guys very much. Uh, Scott H., we're going to see you. Uh, Johnny, Pam, Keith, uh, Dom. Hey, be here Saturday. Tedford, are you going to be here? I hope you are. And Grievous, I hope all of you guys are because. It was nice seeing you all. Most, most of you people make comments on my channel. <laughs> I know, right? It's, I've been uh, familiar with everybody. I know you're starting to learn the name. Every you guys are what a what a fun crew. What an awesome crew. All right. Well, it's been a fun, fun afternoon, and uh, all good things must come to an end. Red, thank you very much for coming on today, and thank all of you for watching. See you later, Red. Bye. My blog.